birds. Today, thousands of different species thrive in our world. From conquering the skies, to racing across the lands, and swimming in the seas, for millions of years birds have remained and continue to be a successful evolutionary lineage as their diversity continues to explode. Yet before paleontology and the theory of evolution dawned in the 19th century, the origin of birds had always been a mystery. However, at the dawn of the 20th century, clues and hints to their evolutionary origins started to be uncovered but nothing that was 100% conclusive. In the late 90s, that would all change with the discovery of a single small fossil in northeast China. This three-foot critter would go on to forever alter the paleontological landscape linking what were once two separate lineages into one. What was this small feathered animal? Why was it considered to be such a revolutionary find? How did its excavation contribute to a new era of fossil discoveries and our understanding of fossil preservation? This is the dinosaur known as Cynoceropteryx, the first feathered dragon. The theory of dinosaurs and birds belonging in the same lineage was considered controversial at best from the 19th to the early 20th centuries. The discovery and description of Archaeopteryx in the 1800s, while it did spark the theory, didn't provide enough evidence to paleontologists, and many at the time still disagreed with the idea of dinosaurs being ancestral to birds. The discovery of Deinonychus and its anatomical traits, however, would forever change the way paleontologists looked at dinosaurs bringing birth to the ongoing dinosaur renaissance. This new era brought dinosaurs to life as warm-blooded, potentially feathered animals. No longer were they the cold-blooded, scaly monsters we once portrayed them to be. As the 90s were coming to a close, a groundbreaking discovery was made in August of 1996, when farmer and part-time fossil hunter Li Yumin, who would acquire fossils from the Liaoning province of China and sell them to museums, uncovered a fossil separated by two slabs of basaltic rock. The fossil would be sold to two different museums in China as Yumin recognized the unique quality of the fossil. The two museums holding the unique fossil are the Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology and the National Geological Museum in Beijing. Ji Qiang, the director of the museum in Beijing, immediately recognized the importance of this fossil, along with Canadian paleontologist Philip J. Curry and paleoartist Michael Skrepnik. Qiang would publish and officially describe the fossil as a holotype for a new genus and species of theropod dinosaur in October of that same year naming it Cynoceropteryx prima, meaning first Chinese reptilian wing. The genus name also means Chinese dragon bird in the traditional Chinese language. The holotype specimen, named GMV2123, is known from a fully complete skeleton with preserved organs and stomach contents. What makes its discovery revolutionary is that there's also small hair-like filaments that surround its body. This officially makes it the first feathered non-avian dinosaur to ever be discovered, providing solid evidence that birds and dinosaurs are linked and do belong in the same family tree. Ever since this revolutionary find was made, more discoveries in China provided more feathered dinosaur fossils that were discovered from 1997 and onwards, from the small, four-winged Microraptor in 2000 to the giant Eutyrannus in 2012, along with the feathered Ornithischian Colindodromius, another revolutionary find revealing that all non-avian dinosaurs have a common feathered ancestor. As the 21st century dawned, two more Cynoceropteryx specimens were discovered, named NIGP-127587 and D-21. Cynoceropteryx is also considered to be the first dinosaur found to preserve coloration in a fossil based on physical evidence. One of several controversies regarding its feathers was that its tail, banded in darker and lighter feathers, was believed to be the result of the fossil matrix slab splitting when the fossil was first discovered. Paleontologist Nick Longrich in 2002 suggested otherwise in an SVP abstract. 
arguing that the dark and light patterns were indeed a sign of a banded tail. The presence of dark feathers on its back also showed signs of possible countershade. This would be followed up in a January 2010 publication, as yet another Sinusoropteryx specimen was described, albeit an indeterminate species. What makes IVPP V14202 important is that it provides solid evidence for fossilized melanin, preserving the true color for Sinusoropteryx and showing that it had more of a reddish-brown color in life, making its banded tail similar to red pandas. A 2017 publication provided more information on its full body color, showing that the reddish-brown and white coloration seen on its tail was present across its body and head, with the reddish-brown color surrounding its eyes similar to the bands on raccoons. From its color, feathers, organs, and much more, these well-preserved specimens make Sinusoropteryx one of the most well-studied dinosaurs ever found. Sinusoropteryx is one of the smallest non-avian theropod dinosaurs ever found. The holotype, which died at a fairly young age, reached a body size of 68 centimeters or 27 inches from head to tail, while the largest specimen known, that being NIGP-127587, reached a body size of 1.07 meters or 3.5 feet in length and has been estimated to weigh 0.55 kilograms or 1.2 pounds. A 2014 publication estimated its mass again to be heavier at 0.99 kilograms, or 2.2 pounds. However, an unpublished specimen held at the Shandong Tianyu Natural History Museum may change Sinusoropteryx from being one of the smallest non-avian theropods to one of the largest compsognathids ever discovered. As this individual appears to have a body length of 3.8 meters, or 12.5 feet, Although since the specimen still remains unpublished, it's unclear as to whether or not it will actually be described to Sinusoropteryx or rather to one of its larger relatives. Sinosauropteryx belongs to a family of Neostolorosaurs called Compsognathids, small theropods that existed from the late Jurassic to the early Cretaceous periods, with a potential late Cretaceous record as well. Being no bigger than chickens, Compsognathids likely thrived across the globe, with genera like Marischia being present in South America, Aristosuchus and Compsognathus itself being present in Europe, and the recently named Junmenglong, Sinocalyopteryx, Huaxiognathus, and Vipiognathus being present in Asia. However, as of 2021, the group's validity has lost legitimacy in the eyes of some paleontologists, as Compsognathidae is now considered to possibly be polyphyletic. According to paleontologist Andrea Cow, Compsognathidae could actually be a false clade due to the possibility of some Compsognathid genera being newborn hatchlings of large theropod dinosaurs after the discovery of the Italian genus, Scipionyx, was discovered to potentially be a newborn hatchling of a Carcharodontosaurid allosaur. In this case for Sinusoropteryx, the large yet unpublished 13-foot specimen in Shandong, if ever considered as a specimen of Sinusoropteryx, would provide solid evidence that Sinusoropteryx is also a hatchling for larger theropods present around the same time and region, such as the large Proceratosaurid Tyrannosaurs, Sinotyrannus, and Eutyrannus. As of now though, Sinusoropteryx remains as its own genus and species. Fossils known for Sinusoropteryx were discovered in the well-studied Yixian Formation, an early Cretaceous fossil formation located in the Jehol Bayata Rock Group in the Liaoning province of northeast China. The rock layers in the Yixian and the underlying Jiufatang Formation are in fact so well preserved that it's one of a few formations that paleontologists were able to identify what its climate was like thanks to the rich petrified wood that's been found. The climate during this time was generally humid, although dry seasons that occurred occurred regularly made the environment more arid. However, oxygen isotope studies indicate that the average yearly temperature reached around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, showing that the Yixian, if not the Jehol Biota in general, was actually quite temperate with oddly cold winters. 
A 2013 publication concludes that one potential cause that contributed to this was orbital forcing, where sudden shifts in the Earth's tilted position can cause unusual climatic functions. In addition, the habitat was also very volcanic, which led to periodic eruptions, the release of noxious gases from lake beds, and wildfires. The volcanoes that existed during this time is one of the reasons why so many fossils have been preserved in the Jehol Bayada. The flora that can be found in this formation were dominated by trees such as conifers, ginkgos, seed fern trees, and cycads. Smaller plants consisted of ferns, horsetails, lycopods, and early flowering plants, which were rare during this time. As for fauna, Cynoceropteryx preyed on an array of small critters, coexisted with many large animals, and served as prey for a ton of wildlife. The prey of Cynoceropteryx has in fact been preserved in the specimens known for this genus. Analyzing what Cynoceropteryx ate even led to the description of new taxa, such as the lizard Dilingosaurus, and the early mammals Zhangiotherium and Cynobatar. Interestingly, Cynoceropteryx may have even eaten possibly venomous animals, since Zhangiotherium is known for having a spur on their ankles, similar to the modern monotreme mammal, the platypus. Putting aside what we know it ate, Cynoceropteryx potentially preyed on other small mammals like Chaoyangadens, other reptiles like Jianglong, Mongirisuchus, and Hyphalosaurus, along with small amphibians, possibly fish, and a variety of arthropods ranging from insects, arachnids, and freshwater crustaceans. Cynoceropteryx also possibly hunted small dinosaur and pterosaur hatchlings, and also may have eaten eggs. As for its predators, Cynoceropteryx would have had to deal with a variety of theropod dinosaurs and pterosaurs that could see them as food. Theropods that could have hunted Cynoceropteryx were dromaeosaurids like Gingiraptor and Cynodonthosaurus, Truodontids like Cynovenator, juvenile individuals of the Yixian's apex predator, Eutyrannus, and other larger compsognathids like Cynocalyopteryx. The pterosaurs known from this formation that could have seen Cynoceropteryx as prey were the Tapaharid, Eotyrannodon, and possibly Istiodactylids like Nirhachius and Luchibang if their diet expanded outside of scavenging. Surprisingly, Cynoceropteryx also likely had to worry about some mammals too, specifically Gobiconodonts like the giant Repenomamus. Being one of the largest Mesozoic mammals, there are multiple instances in the fossil record that have shown it preying on small dinosaurs like Cetacosaurus. Putting aside its prey and predators, Cynoceropteryx coexisted with many other animals such as pterosaurs like Moganopterus, one of the largest tenochasmatids, and the Boreopterids, Genuinopterus and Boreopterus itself. Other dinosaurs present in its environment include fairly small theropods like Microraptor and Incisivosaurus, and larger theropods like the herbivorous Bipiaosaurus. Ornithischians like the burrowing Changmienia, the possibly semi-aquatic Liaoningosaurus, and the large hadrosauroid Bolong. There's a chance that Cynoceropteryx lived with some of the last stegosaurs too, since one well-preserved specimen has been recently discovered in the Jehol Biota. However, it hasn't been confirmed if it was found in the Yixian or the Geofetang formation. Sauropods were also present, such as Dongbei Titan, Liao Ningo Titan, and the recently named Ruixinia. Cynoceropteryx made its debut in the 1999 documentary series When Dinosaurs Ruled, featured as paleoart in the episode Land of the Dragon, which discusses dinosaurs that have been discovered in Asia. It would later be featured in the 2004 episode special for Nova titled Four Winged Dinosaur. It then appeared in the 2007 two-part NHK docuseries Mammals vs. Dinos, with the same model appearing again in the 2008 NHK documentary Life After Dinosaurs, and also the 2009 children's series I'm a Dinosaur. Currently, its latest media appearance was in the 2016 French docuseries A New Prehistory, otherwise known as Ancient Earth Season 2, showing Cynoceropteryx hunting a Zhangiotherium and later being hunted itself by a Eutyrannus family. 
As for video games, Sinoceroptrix has so far appeared in a ton of Jurassic games, with its first appearance being in 2001's Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder, 2015's Jurassic World The Game, 2018's Jurassic World Alive, and it recently appeared in the 2023 Feathered Species DLC for the 2021 game Jurassic World Evolution 2. Outside of the Jurassic franchise, Sinoceroptrix has also made an appearance in Fossil Fighters as the vivasaur known as Sopteryx. Sinoceroptrix, although not the biggest of dinosaurs, is still one of the most well-known dinosaurs thanks to its incredibly preserved specimens. From its organs, feathers, and even pigmentation, paleontologists were able to uncover so much thanks to not just one, but four well-preserved specimens. However, there's only one question that remains. That being how and why Sinoceroptrix went extinct. The fossil record in the Yixian ends in the Aptian stage of the early Cretaceous. Thanks to the volcanic regions within the formation and the unique climate in northeast China during this time, it's likely that Sinoceroptrix went extinct possibly from either succumbing to multiple volcanic eruptions or the climate in East Asia changed from either tectonic plate shifting or even the Earth's tilted position during this time changed, ultimately altering the climate and leading to its extinction. Though Sinoceroptrix may have been gone for 122 million years, its discovery forever changed the way we think about dinosaurs, and it proved that most dinosaurs were indeed feathered, and this discovery forever bridged the century-old gap between the dinosaur and bird lineages, putting them together as one. And all of this thanks to Sinoceroptrix, the first feathered dragon. Thank you all for watching our latest video on Sinoceroptrix. This animal will forever remain as a major discovery that sheds light on how amazing fossil preservation can be. This video was directed and narrated by me, and was researched and scripted by the Primal Earth, the Imperpetuate Sabertooth, and myself. Each segment in this video was edited by me, the Primal Earth, the Imperpetuate Sabertooth, MikeMC9797, and Legit Eliminator. Graphic designers for this video were the Dinosaur Hunter and Mephilus. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we did, and we'll see you all next time on Epoch Now.